One of the issues that concerns me greatly is that there is a perception right now that there are many diseases that you shouldn't be too concerned about because everybody has them. And I, I see this in my office. You know, people will, I'll say, oh my gosh, you have acid reflux, you've had five UTIs this year, and it, oh, well, everybody gets that kind of stuff, right? And everybody does in a westernized country eating a terrible diet, but that doesn't mean that it's normal or right or okay. Um, so let's take acid reflux, for example. I've always said that one of the ways you can tell which diseases lots of people are getting is to watch TV for an hour. You see what the drug ads look like. And that tells you what everybody's getting these days. So you certainly see a lot of ads for reflux medication. And this is a foodborne illness. In fact, most of the diseases that we talk about are foodborne illnesses. You eat your way into them, and you can also eat your way out, obviously, too. But um, people eat high-fat diets and lots of, lots of fat, lots of protein, um, alcohol, and coffee, and sugar, and refined garbage. I mean, people don't live on food. They live on garbage. And one thing that happens is weight gain which can cause acid reflux. Just the weight that people carry around when they lay down, for example, can, can cause this problem. Uh, another thing is the diet that I've just described causes constipation, and that can lead to reflux as people are straining to have a bowel movement. You shouldn't have to strain to have a bowel movement. Um, and then the types of foods that people are eating, and eating too much food causes that esophageal sphincter to, um, to worsen, a function to worsen, and even a tiny little drop of acid that gets up into the esophageal tube is so painful. Uh, so what, if you watch TV, the commercials are very clear. All you have to do is take a purple pill or any of the other pills they're advertising. And then you can go right back to the barbecue and eat fried chicken and, um, or uh, some of the, the other solutions that are presented to people. Take a laxative. They have a lot of ads for those on TV too. Uh, you can angle your bed so that you sleep uh, almost sitting upright. And all these solutions that are being put forth they, they suggest everything but solving the problem by changing the food. If you change the food, the reflux goes away, the weight comes off. You can sleep in bed like a normal human laying on your back with the bed level. That's really what we should be doing. But there's not a lot of money in doing that. There's a lot more money in promoting pills that you have to take every day so that you can eat garbage and not suffer the immediate consequences. You will suffer the consequences. You just won't discover, uh, suffer the immediate discomfort associated with eating these foods. While we're talking about ads on TV, you're seeing an increasing number of them for Crohn's and colitis patients. Uh, Crohn's and colitis are inflammatory bowel diseases and they're increasing in the population. Again, they're foodborne illnesses. Um, when I started researching Crohn's and colitis, very interesting what I found. Um, in this community of, of uh, health professionals in, in which I'm a member, uh, we have some great research. I just want to back up and tell you this. We have some great research uh, from people like Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, Dr. John McDougall, uh, Dr. Neil Barnard, where people who have particular diseases like diabetes, coronary artery disease, are placed on specific diets and then you track them over time. Dr. Esselstyn has tracked them for 30 plus years now and see that their disease goes away and they maintain that state of health 30 years after dietary intervention. That's unbelievable and remarkable. We don't have that type of packaged up research for every condition and so about 16 years ago uh, for a variety of reasons I started doing some research on inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's and colitis. Uh, what I was looking for is nobody's done a research study like what Dr. Esselstyn or Dr. Barnard have done with diabetes and coronary artery disease but what could I find that would provide some evidence that it's the food what I found was astounding. There are thousands of articles in medical journals showing that diet has a profound effect on the development of Crohn's and colitis. And these articles give us clues as to the type of diet that can be used to reverse these conditions or at least keep them from progressing so that people maintain their quality of life. Now, if you look at traditional treatment, if you go to the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation's website, one of the things they say, they, they, they say it tastefully, but if you're lucky enough to have ulcerative colitis instead of Crohn's, the ultimate solution is just take your colon out, and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. 
I think that that would not make me not worry about it anymore if I were a colitis patient. The poor Crohn's patients, you can't take your entire digestive tract out, so you're going to suffer for the rest of your life. So that's what traditional medicine offers. But there are many, many clues, as I mentioned. One study I found in Japan. So in Japan, I actually found a study where they're using an intervention. They have used an intervention very much like a plant-based, whole foods, low-fat diet. And the patients, within a very short period of time, go into remission. And there's a facility in California called True North Health, and the doctors there have been able to put Crohn's and colitis patients in remission using, you have to use a little special variation of the diet when you start people out using a plant-based diet. We have done this in our office too. And so we just put Crohn's and colitis and inflammatory bowel disease into another, uh, just add it to the category of foodborne illnesses, um, and the food makes a huge difference. And this is really good news for the 1.4 million people who have the, this condition uh, in the United States who are destined um, for a life of taking increasingly powerful drugs, uh, some of which uh, suppress the immune system. And so uh, this is another thing that bothers me about medicine. We solve one problem and we create another. So now you don't have 20 bowel movements a day, but your risk of cancer increases off the charts. Um, I'm not sure that that's a great trade-off, uh, but that's what traditional medicine is all about. We take care of the symptom, we don't deal with the underlying cause, we create more problems. Oh, we solve those with drugs too. But the point, I think the bigger point that I want to get to here is that even for conditions where we don't have research that has documented um, intervention programs with diet followed over a long period of time, we still can find an enormous amount of, uh, of uh, research in medical journals documenting that diet is an important part of the solution to these particular conditions. And I don't know what we have to do to get medical doctors and, and, uh, and others in the healthcare business to start reading the medical journals, but they're actually a really good source of information, but you have to, you have to actually read the articles. I've, I've always said one of the things that makes for a good healthcare practitioner is you have to have what I call the curiosity gene. You gotta wanna find stuff out. And we have some marvelous doctors and nurse practitioners and dietitians who have that curiosity gene and they're working very hard to find things out and bring that information to the public. But that's not the case with the majority of our colleagues, unfortunately.